Hey there! In this video, you're going to learn how you can use the DNS to manage your multi-cloud implementations. Today we'll be using Constellix's very own multi-cloud management solution that we call Traffic Steering. Traffic Steering means that whenever a user makes a query for your website, your DNS provider will dynamically update your DNS records to point to the fastest provider in real time. These updates are made based on data that we've gathered from our real user monitoring service. That's data that we've grabbed from actual users' browsers. So whenever a traffic steering decision is made, it's actually based on dozens, even hundreds of thousands of users' experiences. All of this data allows us to paint a picture of the current state of the internet that is so accurate that we can actually predict which cloud provider is fastest for each of your website visitors depending on their location and their network. Now that's just what your typical traffic steering service can do. Constellix takes it even further with built-in health monitoring and cutting-edge predictive routing techniques. But we'll talk about those more in just a few minutes. Let's start with the basics. Keep in mind there is a bit of a learning curve in order to get up and running with traffic steering. If you can stick with me for the next few minutes, by the end I promise you'll be a multi-cloud master. In all of our explanations, we're going to talk about multi-CDN configurations, but you can also use these same techniques for multiple DDoS protection vendors as well as other cloud services. First, let's run through a quick primer on how the DNS is used to manage traffic flow to a CDN provider. When a user wants to go to your site, they'll enter your domain into their browser. That initiates a DNS lookup that will end at the authoritative DNS provider. That's the company that hosts your DNS records, like Constellix. Here we'll find a CNAME record that points www.site.com to a CDN URL. Easy, right? But this is no longer a viable solution. It's actually considered a poor practice to use a single CDN service. Two reasons. CDN outages are inevitable. You need a backup plan for when that happens, and a single web server is not going to cut it. Two, no single CDN vendor performs the best across the globe or even regionally. So let's throw one more provider into the mix. The thing is, we need something that sits in front of our DNS records that decides which CDN should be used. You could pop in a load balancer, but that adds an extra lookup. And plus, load balancers are expensive and require a lot of maintenance. So instead, let's use a different kind of DNS configuration, like a round robin record, or we can make things even simpler with record pools. Record pools will rotate through your list of CDN URLs and spit out the next one in line every time it is queried. But what happens if one of your providers has an outage? Good news. Pools have built-in health monitoring and failover. As soon as we can't reach a provider, it'll be removed from the pool until it comes back online. So now we've solved one problem, redundancy and outage prevention. But what about performance? Pools also have baked-in regional latency monitoring, but we call this Internet Traffic Optimization, or ITO for short. ITO uses our vast network of over 100 monitoring nodes to test the response times of each of your CDN providers. It then sends those metrics to our DNS engine, which will spit out the best provider in each region. The problem is, ITO isn't specific enough. It makes sweeping generalizations of who the best provider is for your region, not your actual location or the network you're on. And where are these metrics coming from anyway? Monitoring nodes, located in data centers. Your users are most likely not sitting in data centers, are they? So we came up with something better. Instead of using synthetic monitoring nodes, we power our ITO technology with real user monitoring metrics. We call this service traffic steering. Real user monitoring, or RUM for short, is able to account for the last mile of user experience. That mile is made up of hundreds of networks that your users are depending on to connect to the internet. All right, now we're ready to dig into how traffic steering works. Let's start with a basic DNS query for our website at www.site.com, which is using our new traffic steering service. Before the record lookup can happen, Constellix will first look at where the user is coming from. In this case, we're making the request from the United States, which is in the region of North America East, over the AS number 64496. So what's this AS number? AS numbers, or ASNs, are used to identify different networks. In this case, it represents the ISP that we're using to connect to the internet. Later on, traffic steering is going to use this information to decide which CDN provider is fastest for our network. Alright, back to our record lookup. 
Here we have four records called dub dub dub. Three of these records have filters applied. These filters are actually rules that must be met in order to use that record. Each filtered record is named for a region, country, and a CDM provider. That means that if you want to use one of those filtered records, you can only access it if you're in that specific region, country, and you have to be using one of the networks specified in the record. Let's open up a filter and see how this works. Here we have a country and a list of the ASNs of the different networks that have been detected as being the fastest for that CDM provider in that country. So when we make our request, Constellix will check if any of our filters contain both our country and ASN. Then Constellix will point to the corresponding CNAME record, which will point to that CDN provider's URL. In this example, our ASN of 64496 matches the North America East USA CDN1 filter. And now we have access to that corresponding CNAME record with the URL of CDN1. Great job, you made it through your first traffic steering lookup. Now let's see what actually happens when we finish the lookup. Our browser is going to load the website files for www.site.com. And now since this website is using traffic steering, it's also going to have RUM installed on the website. That means that there's a short script called a beacon that's embedded on the website. That beacon will fire every time the page is loaded. Now this happens all in the background and users won't even notice that it's there. But it's actually doing something pretty cool. On every page load, the beacon is going to attempt to load a pixel from all of the CDM providers that you can use in our traffic steering solution. And then we'll take all those response times and push them to our RUM engine, where we decide which provider is the fastest for that user's network in that country. In this example, CDN3 is the fastest, so Constellix will immediately update the IP filter for North America East in the United States for CDN3 to include the ASN of our network. All right, but just a minute ago, our ASN was supposedly faster with CDN1. What happened? Well, the internet is volatile and traffic conditions can change in the blink of an eye. So what might have been fast a few hours ago may not hold true now. Constellix stays on top of these traffic fluctuations by constantly updating the filters as CDM performance changes for every ASN. In this case, Constellix will remove AS64496 from our North America East USA filter for CDN1 and add it to the North America East USA CDN3 filter where it is currently the fastest. Now traffic steering works best when you have more RUM metrics. That means more people visiting your website from different countries using different networks. The more people who trigger your RUM beacon, then the more networks you'll be able to add to your traffic steering filters. But what if a user's ASN doesn't match any of our existing filters? It would be easy to just have them use the default, but that relies on our synthetic monitoring. Remember, we talked about it a few minutes ago when we showed you how ITO works. It's nowhere near as accurate as RUM. So instead, Constellix will make correlations from the existing RUM data to predict which CDN will be the fastest for that user's network. All right, let's see how this works. Here we have a user in Germany who's making a query over the AS65100 network. Unfortunately, no one using her ASN in Germany has triggered our RUM beacon, so we don't have any data yet but we do have our country. So what Constellix will do is look at the existing data from Germany for each CDM provider and figure out which one was consistently the fastest. In this case, CDN2 saw the strongest speeds in Germany, so Constellix will infer that CDN2 will also be the fastest for AS65100, so it will return CDN2's URL. But what happens if CDN2 is down? Now keep in mind that we don't have any existing RUM data for AS65100 in Germany, and now predictive routing won't work because the best CDM for Germany is down. In this case, we'll have to use the default record. Now that's that fourth record that we saw back in our very first example that didn't have a filter applied. But this record isn't your typical DNS record. It uses ITO, our latency monitoring service, to determine which CDM provider is the fastest according to our network of synthetic monitoring nodes. 
Right now, CDM2 is both healthy and it responds faster than any of our other CDM providers in Europe. So Constellix will return the URL for CDM2. All right, that's it. Do you feel like a multi-cloud master now? You should because by now you have a greater understanding of the different multi-CDN strategies using the domain name system. You also learned how Constellix's traffic steering solution answers queries. And you also got a sneak peek of how Constellix uses predictive routing techniques to anticipate traffic conditions. And you've seen how synthetic monitoring can be used to augment RUM when your providers have outages. Now go forth and deploy your multi-cloud with confidence.